Coming at you live from DNA in beautiful South Pasadena, California. This is <laughs> the Blue Heaven Podcast. <laughs> How much did I break right now? I see the sign fell. My ball dropped. What's going on, Dodgers Nation? My name is Clint. You can find me as Real FRG on the Twitter and Instagram. That gentleman right there is the man, the myth, the delicious DMAC underscore LA. That is his local. Oh, this is your official legal name now, right? It is. I had it changed uh, yeah. last week. I'm yeah. going, it's one name. Call me DMAC. Real proud. Of it. A little chillier day. Uh, Cody's on the board today. He appreciated my. Now, is it a beanie or is it a skull cap, guys? That's what we got to really figure out. But Cody's in the house. What's going on, my guy? Beanie Clint. Beanie FRG. Drop, I'm here for it, baby. Drop an F in the chat for the beanie. But, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Doug, how are you doing? Uh, are you surviving a slow and very cold hot stove? Right now, uh, I'm like the Dodgers. Well, right now, the Dodgers are like the Dodgers with runners in scoring position in the NLDS. They're doing a lot of nothing. Ooh. And right now, I think Ooh. they're standing pat. I think we're seeing Andrew Friedman do what Andrew Friedman does, where, hey, if there's a player out there that they can sign and then get value from after they don't like the deal from another team, maybe they jump on it. We're going to get into some Dansby Swanson in a little bit. We're going to talk some other free agents that are still available. But as of right now, it does feel like this. Dodger team isn't doing much, but I will say that if they are serious about making any signings, they're going to have to do it at some point. I don't yep. think you can wait. This is not like it used to be. I mean, the way I see it is that this is a game of musical chairs. That at some point, the music's going to stop, and there's not going to be a chair for the Dodgers when it comes yeah. to making some of these signings. But very interesting. I know Dodger fans are frustrated. They want a nice Jeff Passan bomb that says Dodgers sign. But hey, you're going to get... Jason Hayward and Shelby Miller, and you're gonna like it. Watch out, Padres. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to like put a move on my damn Christmas wish list or something like that. Can the Dodgers sign anybody? I mean, hell, just I'll take it's Cody signing. Let's go. Minor league deal. It's got to be better than Jason Hayward. Hey, you're gonna get that Cole Hamill spring training invite, and you're gonna like it. Get some coal in your stocking, <laughs> Mr. Pasias. <laughs> you know what? I'm really waiting for the next Danny Duffy deal, and of course <laughs> Kevin Pillar for that legend right there. <laughs> Guys, let us know where you're representing Dodgers Nation tonight on this fine Monday evening. Drop your, your zip codes. Not zip code. It's an area code. Drop your area codes. I don't want a zip code. Let us know what city you're watching. Yeah, like Doug already mentioned on today's show, we got to talk a little bit about the latest, a lot of it about the latest on the, uh, quote, hot stove. Um, the Mets are making a bunch of moves. The Padres are making a bunch of moves. And I wonder... Is Dodgers ownership no longer the class in baseball? So we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll look around the National League, kind of compare where the Dodgers maybe rank. <laughs> could do our own power rankings right now. Uh, I wanted to look a little bit also at the outfield. We'll see how that looks. So we're going to potentially start the 2023 Outlook Series and, and Outfield Edition and a whole lot more. So before we get into the show, we got to remind you this is a podcast. We're on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, everywhere your podcasts are available for free. We're there. Subscribe, review the podcast, leave a rating. It means a whole lot. Gets us uh, that much closer to one billion dollars, which you know we don't we don't have. And don't forget, this is a live stream. Drop into them comments. Subscribe while you're here. Leave a like. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you're watching after the fact. Let's dig into some of these comments here. Where are people representing tonight? We got Tim Rogers from the 760. What up, Tim? We got Joe Correo says extremely blue in 602. I see what you did right oh. there. I like the rhyme scheme. And then we got Steve who says, hey, guys, watching from Anaheim, California. I like it. That's where future Dodger Shohei Otani Shotani resides. That's where he works right now. That's where he works. <laughs> we got Dave Luna. <laughs> uh, we got taking a final watching from East Hollywood. We got Nando 390. What happens if all these youngsters all end up being a bust? Won't the Dodgers essentially ruin their value? It's a very interesting question, but the reality there is you won't know unless you... Hey, look, if you get a lottery ticket at 7-Eleven, you don't know if you're going to win until you scratch it off. You have to scratch off that lottery ticket yeah. and see what comes of it. But I think when it comes to trade value, teams look at team control. And if they see the potential, a lot of teams out there think they can fix guys as long as that raw talent is flash. But it is a very interesting observation. I think that's one thing that I, I struggle with when I look at the future of the Dodgers in 2023 is like, yeah, you do want to usher in this new era, but not all at once. Not right. I mean, that's what makes it difficult. Yeah. You're, you're at this point, you're relying on a lot, like a lot out of some dudes that are. Not necessarily unproven, but unproven and untested. You know, you would like to have seen them get maybe a little bit more. You know, uh, 
I would I would argue I feel slightly better about some of the pitching because you did see a lot of of uh, Ryan Pepio last year. You saw a lot of um, Michael. Uh, uh, what's his name? The Grove. Keep, why do I keep forgetting the Grove? Him? Is he that forgettable that I just consistently keep forgetting? My uh, that's listen. my goal for Michael Grove. Have a no hitter so Clint remembers you. Have a perfect <laughs> it's, game. It's not it's not like a personal thing. It's just there, I've gone through so many of these names and it's just such a generic name. Anyways. Yeah, we saw what they can do a little bit at the big league level last year, but the the lack of of like an honest trial with Miguel Vargas, and now you're going into 2023 with him potentially being like your starting left fielder or your starting third baseman at some point in time, or if he's got to play, he's not going to come off the bench. So what exactly are you going to do with this guy? And how come you didn't get more out of him uh, last year? Get a, get a, a a taller cup of coffee or something like that, but. <sighs> I guess eventually we'll find out. We'll learn a lot during spring training. Of course, there's still time for moves to happen. We have about two and a half months until pitchers and catchers report. Greg Osterberg's in the stream, checking in from the 310. We got some love in here for DMAC, of course, the B-Life on YouTube. Hello, Dodgers Nation. How you doing? The B-Life. Danielle checking in. DC checking in. Thomas Wang checking in with a hi. How you doing? Mr. Wang. We got some Clint territory. We got David underscore says watching from Whittier. Clint says Whittier where the girls are prettier. Uh, and then we got uh, the 714 in the house from Mark. We got play him or trade him, Tim Rogers. That's what I've been saying. You either play him, you trade him. Next year <laughs> is here. You play them, and sometimes you do play them to trade them. So that's also something as well. We got Brian Gax, who always his comment is Brian Gax that's with the wave emoji. Classic Brian Gax right there. We got Dodgers got holes everywhere. That's from Big RR64. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of big question marks with this team. We're going to talk about the outfield. Of course, you have the glaring hole at shortstop, the rotation needs to be fortified so yeah we've been used to a lot of consistency a lot of continuity over the last yeah. few years but there is definitely a transition they are turning the page it's going to feel like a new era of dodger baseball and even more so if let's say they don't bring it back a justin turner and they turn the page on jt i think that could be a possibility but yeah all of you guys i feel like dodgers nation is freaking out i think one of the reasons why too as well is the padres have made the moves that they yes. have made if the padres didn't go crazy and weren't spending money like it was Monopoly money down there and giving out 15,000-year contracts. I'm telling you, some of these players are going to be collecting Social Security in the last year of their contract. That's how long these deals are for. If that wasn't the case, I think Dodger fans would feel a little better about this necessary retooling that they're doing. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's a good word. It is necessary for a number of reasons because they do need to reset that luxury tax you look at Shohei Otani, that's a good enough reason alone to want to do that. But there's some intriguing names out there. Uh, I thought that water was just spilling down, but it was the cable. Um, <laughs> this guy's drinking water over here, man. Straight scotch, it's, bro. It's a, it's a big day. Let's go. I know, right? Hydration. Stay hydrated, kids. You know, uh, we posted the poll on, on our uh, Twitter over the weekend. Manny Machado is going to be a free agent next year. Just saying. I don't know about all y'all. I'd welcome him back. Uh, it. You hate him more because of, yeah, what he did in 18, but you hate him more because he seems to really try against the Dodgers, but also he's just a damn good player. He's one of the best third basemen in the game, and there's going to be some some quality third basemen available in the market next year. And he actually he actually had the audacity to use an actual Instagram post as his farewell to the Dodgers, unlike <laughs> Trey Turner, who just goes to his Instagram story. How dare you? He had Let a him very... Know, let no, him know, D-Max. Hey, man, I'm hey, telling that, you, man. That piss you off, Cody. What are your, what are your thoughts on Trey Turner's I think it's uh, a, farewell? It's an interest. I mean, on the story where it's not even, like, there for, like, the fans to, like, go back and look yeah. at, like, that's that's pretty He only loved us for 24 harsh, hours. Like, that's crazy. 24 hours a worth of love. post is forever. Um, that's yeah. like getting you would, a temporary you would, tattoo versus a real tattoo. <laughs> you, you, would have, you would hope for a little bit more. Yeah, Manny Machado, you know, he must have he, – he got into somebody who – went to somebody who knew a lot of the words – because <laughs> I don't think he knew a lot of those words. I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, respectfully. He said it was a privilege of playing Dodger Blue. And look, the thing about Manny Machado is they don't make that World Series if he doesn't produce. He nope. actually came through in the NLCS. And look, the reality with Manny Machado is he can slug defensively. He's one of the best in the game. I don't think he comes back to the Dodgers. I just don't see that because because I think next year top priority is Shohei Otani. But hey, if you're the Dodgers and Manny Machado would be interested in maybe a $250 million deal, 
maybe they consider i don't think that would be the case I think it's going to be higher than that you see you see the money that's going out there right now True. manny's going to be 31 next year i believe so yeah this is the last time to really get the bag really get a bag uh I, you know maybe 250 if it's like a six seven year deal or something like that he's gonna get more years it whether or not that's back with san diego it's, that's pretty open to interpretation yeah. i think i think san diego is preparing for an eventual or potential departure of machado potential likely departure of juan soto because they got some names coming off uh, off the their 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 books next year with Hader and and Darvish as well. So why not go all in? You're seeing them do it right. You're seeing what the Mets are doing. What the Mets are doing is absolutely insane. I mean, you're looking at what like a a four hundred twenty million dollar uh, bill after hey. after luxury tax. <laughs> Hey, all I'm saying. Spark up for uh, for my boy Stephen Cohen. Yeah. All I'm saying is Stephen Cohen was this close to buying the Dodgers back before the Guggenheim Group <laughs> did. No, but look, the Dodgers they've spent almost two billion dollars on ca contracts. Yeah. Money is not going to be the issues with the Dodgers. It's like we were talking about before the show. I think what the reality is is they like a lot of these players, but they're not in love with them to the point of giving yes. them the type of bags that they're gonna, they're going to command. If they love Carlos Correa, they would pay Carlos Correa. And I just don't think as a player they. Think think that he's a guy that they feel comfortable giving an 11-year deal to or whatever he's going to command because the mar the market is just absolutely outrageous yeah. this offseason. It's just at another level. <clears throat> Good stuff. Good, the market is insane. We'll look at some of these numbers in a minute. Uh, let's get through a few more of the comments here. Dave Luna Dave Luna earlier saying uh, they got to get on the phone with Ross Stripling and Andrew Benintendi like yesterday. Uh, we were talking before the show about Benintendi. I agree with you. I'm less in on the Benintendi. Stripling, I would love just for an, a myriad of reasons. Some of them selfishly. The other part is that, hey, this is a dude who can easily plug in 130 innings, which is that's that's my goal. That's my that's my uh, my focal point. I want a pitcher that can get you 120 to 140 innings and help be a bridge for them. Them kitty kids, the kids down on yeah. the uh, down on the, the, the farm making their way up. A couple more people. Jacob Rose, 951 Manuel Manuel Mata. 818 in here. We got 904. Cooper Neal checking in from St. Augustine, Florida. Cooper, thanks for hanging out. We got uh, I.E. Doyer. Dodgers going to win the World Series. I like that. We got Daniel Muller. Do you expect an Andrew Friedman surprise in the next few days? In the next few days no. in December, an Andrew Friedman dis surprise in December? No, I don't expect that. I think if you're going to see something from Andrew Friedman, he's going to be cooking something in February. Like I was saying, what's Andrew Friedman cooking right now? Well, the meal is like those two hot dogs in the bowl of Cheerios with the cheese in it. That's what he's cooking is, right now. But uh, I don't think I don't expect any surprise. I do think, though, they are in the mix for Dansby Swanson if it is the right amount and the in the it's under the right circumstances and the right contract. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But I think if you're looking for a surprise, Dansby Swanson would be that surprise. I don't anticipate them signing Rodon or Correa. Yeah, hope I, I hope for one of them. I, I don't know. I don't know how in on the Rodon market is. He seems like one guy who could be gotten. I think. Uh, didn't one uh, one our friend Juan Tribio tell you that over uh, yeah, yeah. over at winter meetings last week? It's like if any of anybody left on the market is potentially open to the high value short term deal, would probably possibly be Carlos Rodon. I mean, pitchers can get money at any point. You've seen with Justin Verlander, like you can take the big money in your age, I don't know, 32, 33 season, 34 season, give yourself some opt outs, and then still potentially. You know, you're banking on yourself to stay healthy and keep performing, which you should want to do anyway. So possibly get that Verlander money in, uh, in your late 30s or that Scherzer money in your late 30s. Anthony Kane in the stream. Do you guys think the Dodgers pivot from the short term, uh, the short deal approach? Take these long term deals uh, or these long term deals seem to be taking over. Do you think there's any panic and pivot possibility with Gomes, Freeman and the, the front office? I don't think so this year. I think the plan was always if we can get one of these guys on a deal that we feel comfortable with, we will pull the trigger. But we're not going to give Carlos Correa 11 years. I think when it comes to Dansby Swanson, they probably said to themselves, hey, we get him on a six-year, $150 million deal out of $25 million AAV. We might consider that. But when you consider that Xander Bogart signs an 11-year deal, Trey Turner signs an 11-year deal. If I'm Dansby Swanson, I'm loving the way this market has unfolded. And 
I think he's in a great position to get himself at least an eight-year deal. So I don't anticipate the Dodgers to hand out any of these decade-long contracts. Like I said, they're going to be Hall of Fame eligible by the time they're basically over. That's how long these deals are. But like I said, if they love one of these players, I think they would. But I just don't think that they're as invested in any of these guys. Then you add the fact, too, you want to reset that CBT. You want to give young guys opportunities to see if you can get that next generation of Dodgers players that can really help form this core. Hey, look at the Houston Trastros. Do they have any $300 million players? No, but you look at Kyle Tucker, you look at Jeremy Pena. I mean, you need to give these young guys opportunities. So I think the Dodgers realize that, hey, this is a gap year and they are setting themselves up to make a major run at Shohei Otani. I'm trying to speak it into existence. <laughs> I'm trying to manifest it. I predicted on Instagram today. I said that the Dodgers will make everyone forget about the uneventful 2022 offseason when they do sign Shohei Otani on a one year, $1.6 billion contract. No, but on a, on a, on a $500 million or on a $400 million deal, make him the highest paid player in the history of the sport. So I definitely think they're heading towards that direction. And I think they also realize too, that if you do give Shohei Otani a big bag and the next season, Julio Urias could be gone. You yeah. do need to have some of these young guys step up, either it be Dustin May, a Tony Gonson, a Bobby Miller, a Gavin Stone, a Ryan Pepio. You need some of these guys to be core contributors, or it's just not going to make sense financially because you can't yeah. just buy an entire world series contri uh, um, uh, uh, instead of what the Padres fans say that we buy our World Series when they're yeah. the ones that do it. Yeah, the, the Padres. Uh, Padres fans definitely they have that. They they don't have that in their back pocket anymore. Exactly. They went out and got every, everybody. This they're scooping up everybody out That's here. That's what's in. That's that is what is in. Thank you very much, producer Cody. Um, well, let's talk Padres. Let's talk Mets. Let's talk off season. Let's talk moves. The Mets now join the Padres firmly in leaving the Dodgers in the dust when it comes to the moves and the big spending going on everywhere but in L.A. Mets bring in our boy Kodai Senga reportedly. It's not official yet. Five-year, $75 million deal, which was somewhere in the neighborhood of what we had kind of we're talking about earlier in the off season. I forgot what. Yeah. Well, I forgot what deal I had said. Um, I think I said the the four and sixty four. So it, it's relatively close. But Senga off the board. That's kind of a big blow for what we had hoped for. For what we were crossing our fingers and whatever other appendages and digits we can do. Uh, the Mets do lose Chris Bassett, which was a, a big part of their rotation last year. Blue Jays steal him up. Three years, $63 million deal. These these prices are insane, man. These prices are outrageous. I mean, this it's not crazy Gideon anymore. It, exactly. I mean, it's it's insane. <laughs> it's like you get Jordans when they come out and you get them at a pretty decent price. But if you wait like 10 months to buy them on StockX, they're like eight times the price. They're basically paying these premium prices. And Kodai Senga, $75 million. I think they can get great value from that if his stuff transfers because yeah. he's still in the prime. He didn't have to pose. He's got filthy stuff, triple digit heat. He has that ghost for but he has dealt with some nagging injuries throughout his career. There yeah. is some talk that maybe he's used as a multi-inning reliever. So I think what the Dodgers are saying with Kodai Senga is, was he going to be our mid-rotation guy? Was he going to be our solid number three starter? Or do we have a Dustin May, a Tony yeah. Gonsolin? And if you look at the rotation next season, you still have Julio Urias, you have Clayton Kershaw, Dustin May, and you have Tony Gonsolin. Well, that leaves one spot for one of these up-and-comers. Yeah. So but you're I think also relying a lot on D May, you're relying a lot on Gonsolin to kind of have a redo. That's true. And I've had a lot of people hitting me up on Twitter saying now is the time to trade Tony Gonsolin. You don't think he is for real or whatever it may be. And if I think for yeah, if you yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> what would their offer be for no, but I think when it comes to Tony Gonsolin, <laughs> he's an interesting name where I think that his stock, when you look at the injury history, when you look at how he performed in that NLDS, that it wouldn't be the right time. But talk about that Mets team. It just feels like they are trying to be so hyper aggressive. And yeah. we'll see how it works out in a few years because oh, yeah. Justin Verlander's aging. Max Scherzer didn't perform well in the NLDS. Kodai Senga isn't a known. But I just, I'm disappointed because I wanted to hear Clint say, Senga oh, for man. like the next five years. But because it's going to be game over for your Senga. I will remember you. 
Yeah, this is uh, not karaoke night, gang. But yeah, I mean, I would love to see that deal because I think it was the most um, the most reasonable deal they could have got for somebody with potential ace stuff. Five years, seventy five in the market that we're seeing is not bad at all. That's that's three more years and a couple, uh, you know, four a couple more million than than Verlander's getting for the next two. So. You have that potential sending him through the Dodger you know, pitching factory with Mark Pryor. That would have been fun. It would have been exciting. But now it's going to be a what if. What if they had gone into that? And, you know, we talked a good bit about it. Or you talked a good bit about it last week. The, uh, you know, the Bauer situation is really seemingly, according to, you know, some reports, leaving the Dodgers with their hands in their pockets right now because they kind of don't know if they're going to have to pay him back pay if – if they're going to have to deal with what to do with him on the roster uh, within the next couple of weeks or in or in into the new year, those are the words. Um, and you know, we know we know Friedman doesn't like working in free agency anyway, so it kind of like is hit and miss. But it would have been nice to have seen, you know, Senga particularly. But there's there's more out there. There's more options. Let's get to else's off the board. The other big name. Uh, <laughs> reportedly linked to the Dodgers. Kevin Kiermeyer off the board goes to Toronto. No terms yet, which is kind of odd. There's really only like one report, and then I think Heyman retweeted it or something like that. But you haven't heard anything about Kiermeyer either way. I don't want him in LA. I think you kind of share the same. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd rather see what the hell James Outman's made out of, or any of the guys in the minor league. Get my, get Cody's boy Kevin Pillar back, because why not? Let's let it eat. But. Um, and the other one, uh, Giants get BP pitcher uh, Sean Manea, two year, twenty five million, same deal that Heaney got. The fact that these dudes are getting two and twenty five, yeah, Dodgers aren't playing at these rates. Yeah, I mean the mark is outrageous, and Sean Manea, I'm just glad that he stays in the division. The Dodgers continue to beat him up, and yeah, when a guy like that is getting that kind of money, and you look at Sanga's contract, the Dodgers they're signing Shelby Miller to 1.5 million dollar deals, and Jason Hayward to minor league deals. Minor. It shows that they're really trying to wait these things out and see who else comes becomes available. But yeah, I mean at some point you do have to spend some money, and you have an understanding about what's going to happen with Trevor Bauer. I mean. And he's on the hook for you know a little over sixty million dollars at this point. And yes, there is uncertainty, but you got yourself into that. And yeah, Trevor Bauer, it hasn't worked out. And I think that when you look at Major League Baseball, they're in a position too where yeah, it's really hampered what the Dodgers can do. But that's just the situation that they're in. And I think that part of the penalty that you pay with that is is saying, hey, we're gonna move on as an organization, and whatever becomes of it becomes of it. Yep. But you have to fill out this <laughs> roster and put a competitive team together. And yeah, the Senga one is the one I thought was right in the middle. It was right below a Carlos Rodon where you would be looking at a six year deal and he's going to get paid, especially when you see the market. But Senga, when you consider the upside that he had, you pair him with the Dodgers pitching coaching and he definitely would have a role for this team. But I think they know deep down inside that they are going to get major contributions from the Bobby Miller types, from the Gavin Stone types. And look, Clayton Kershaw, he made his debut when he was 20 years old. I mean, who? Urias, he made his debut when he was very young. They just need one of these young pitchers to step up, take the torch, and just start contributing right away. But yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of sad when you see the Dodgers really not involved in any signings really whatsoever. Yeah, it's, I mean, honestly, I don't know about you, I went into the offseason not expecting too much at this time, but I didn't expect anything from a lot of teams. I, I didn't expect all all the top free agents to be scooped up. Most of the top free agents to be scooped up this early. Um, of course, some guys are still out there. So segue, segue, that works. Latest on the hot stove, who's still out there? Yes, everybody's favorite. If we're talking about Bauer, I guess we kind of got to talk about Correa, another one who would be a fan favorite if he were signed, and they would have to the the front office and Correa himself would have to answer some intriguing questions from the media. But uh, today, Kevin Millar, intentional talk, MLB Network says Carlos Correa would fit in nicely with the Dodgers lineup wise. And he said, like, fans, get over the 17 thing. It's easy for, for you to say. I think I've made it well known. I don't care about his involvement in the the, the cheating thing or, or whatever. I would very much welcome a signing like that. I just I would not welcome a Correa signing at the numbers he's gonna be looking for. Because we know Scotty Boris, who wants all the money? For this guy. 
Yeah, I think when it comes to Carlos Correa, whether the big domino for me was Aaron Judge re-signing with the New York Yankees, because let's say that the Giants get Aaron Judge and you find a way to at least competitively get into that Correa market, maybe you squeeze out an offer, but he is going to get $330 plus million. Yep. He is going to get the years. He won't be signing a three-year, $105.3 million contract with the opt-outs, but if he would, the Dodgers absolutely would sign him to a short-term deal. Don't believe for a second that the Dodgers are not signing Carlos Correa because they think, oh, it's going to hurt the fans' feelings. They yeah. don't <laughs> care. It's the years. And really also, is. I just don't think they're big on investing on a shortstop that long that is going to be a third baseman later in his career. And yes, he would solve so many of the Dodgers' problems play shortstop I think he would get to back to being a gold glove shortstop next season you need a defender at that position that you can trust especially next year and also he hits the ball hard he is a great postseason player yes he would have to deal with some PR backlash but what I want to know is you guys know I read everything I watch everything I haven't seen <laughs> one indication out there that Carlos Correa would want to sign with the Dodgers and yeah. until I learn if I find out by Scott Board my good friend from uh, our days down in San Diego. Tight that, pants. Yeah, tight pants boys. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You have tight, tight <laughs> pants boys, yeah. With me, him, Bueller, uh, Alex yeah. Vesia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The he whole has, gang. We just rolling deep. You just see us at Lululemon. We're just dropping crazy cash. But uh, <laughs> no, I mean, until if I learned that, hey, Carlos Cray is sitting out there waiting to be a Dodger, then maybe my opinion would change. But I predicted that he would sign with the Giants. I still feel like the Giants need to make a splash like a Carlos Correa, Brandon Crawford there for one more year. You can move things around. They yeah. need that villain. And I also think the twins are very interesting because it feels like the twins are out there and they want to sign either a Dansby Swanson or a Correa. And they are a mid-market, but they're shelling out some major Man, offers. You could be the twins. You could want to sign anybody, anybody you want, but it's still, you got to market uh, Minnesota. That you, This is where you live now for the next decade. Minnesota's kind of ass. Like, it's nice to visit. I'm imagining it's not great to live there unless you like it, you know, just being, like, ball-ass cold all the yeah. time. I don't even know if that's an expression, but it's going to be cold. It's going to be pretty cold. It's cold. It's you're also never going to have, like, a, you're probably never going to have a club that's perpetually at the top of baseball in payroll because, like you said, it is mid-market. They've been good at times. They've been pretty good at times, but usually they kind of build their way there, and then they don't go that extra step and then it just crumbles and they they very much play to maybe win a division they're not legitimate world series contenders over there so if i'm like i'm like somebody like carlos correa it's like what do i want to do do i want to just go get all the money or do i want to have a better chance of winning and la re definitely represents the one of the better chances of winning san francisco maybe not that far off you're probably not winning in 2023 I don't know. That that means something to me. I've won once uh, with an asterisk. I would like to prove it. And, hey, might as well prove it with the team that I, you know, allegedly cheated against. Yeah, that's a fantastic I mean, point. I mean, he is going to be hungry to shed that and get that first real World Series title that doesn't have an asterisk attached to it, that does, wasn't won by banging trash cans. And I think that cheater! is something that... It's cheater! Yeah, <laughs> playing that drop for like years now. Um, <laughs> it, it's something that I think is important to Carlos Correa. And then, like I said a few weeks ago, if he'd be willing to take on the challenge of winning over a fan base where probably 40% of your fan base wants to boo you to high heaven and boo you 81 yeah. times a year, then that would say a lot about the play. But let me ask you this question. Would you, if you're the Dodgers, if it was your money, would you sign Correa to an 11-year, let's say, $330 million contract? Would you be willing to give him that length and that kind of money? I, I, that's where I, I would have the pause. I mean, if it's my money and it's you know, money has no, uh, has no meaning like Steve Cohen, sure, I'm sure he would be in on that if they didn't already have uh, a Lindor in New York. Because you know he's even as soon as you move him off a of short, he's still going to be, you know, fine. At third, most likely, this is a guy who's who's won a platinum glove. But um, me being somewhat smart, me trying to pretend I'm putting on my Dodger cap, I you, you just can't do eleven and three thirty or, or eleven and three. You can't do the eleven year deal and be stuck with this guy until he's in his forties. 
Yeah, and he's a guy that has dealt with some injuries throughout his career. There is some talk that he has a bulky back. He is a taller shortstop, and for the most part, say for Derek Jeter, who, if you look at his numbers, Derek. I mean, he is a guy where modern analytics basically destroyed his defensive reputation. Well, Shut most up, of the time, you, know. you see that guy slide over to third base. Now, I think he brings those intangibles, that passion and that fire, but to me, $330 million, $350 million, it doesn't make sense when you consider that the Dodgers are going to to be in play for that $400 million deal for Shohei Otani. I think that to me is Damn. the play. And my big fear about that is maybe the Angels get some competent ownership. But that's to me what my focus is on. I think Dansby Swanson, I think we'll talk about Dansby here in just a second. That's a move where I could talk myself into it at the right price. Mm -hmm. Because if you're talking about $330 million for Correa, $300 million for Trey Turner, two eighty million for Xander Bogarts, I mean, the shortstop position in the next 10 years, it's going to shift to the point where you're saying, hey, what are we getting from that position defensively? Yeah. And if defensively they can hold it down for half of that contract, you're feeling good about it. Get into a couple more of the comments before we dive into that too much. I want to get in uh, some folks' uh, takes on Correa, carnivorous lunar activity. Correa to Dodgers only if he comes in to Dodgers Nation to take his beating. <laughs> That's what's in. You like that? We're gonna sit, Cody. You're gonna be uh, you be down to to like just lay into Carlos him? in, and we'll we'll take care of business. <laughs> wow, <laughs> sounds so menacing. Oh, man, that's that's frightening right there. Is that, that a threat? Is that He's going to be arrested with that kind of threat. Me and Carlos will become buddies. <laughs> Best friends. Um, let's I'll, see. I'll reenact we got the... Seven, we got the B-Live. Seven years, 210 for Correa. Yeah, I think at that price, maybe you consider, but that deal is not being considered no. this offseason. The game has changed dramatically. You have Stephen Cohen spending money like crazy. The Padres. I mean, the game has just exploded, and these players are getting paid. So, you got yeah. Chris Bassett getting 21 a year. Come on now. Remember the good old days? You get like three solid players for that price. You re you remember? I I remember when they uh, the J D Drew deal happened because it happened at like twelve thirty at night. Gosh, and it was five years and fifty five million dollars, and you're like, man, that's that's kind of a lot of money for this dude. He yep. seems to have health issues. Eleven million a year. Whew. He's such a, he was so highly touted though. You you can't get a a damn free agent for that much anymore. No, I remember every day. You couldn't you couldn't get that for like one year almost. Yeah, exactly. No, for sure. I mean, let's talk more about the old times, the good old days, the good old days, what, what Piazza wanted from the Dodgers before his ass was traded. <laughs> Telling you, man, these guys, hey, tell your kids out there, play baseball. Uh, we got Friedman is cooking methamphetamine from Brian <laughs> over on YouTube. <laughs> we got to Henry Bruh. Vega. Hey, Carlos Correa, drunk live on air. Yeah, Correa, you're welcome on the show any day. Just be great content. We can ask him those hard hitting questions that some of the reporters are afraid to ask, and we can uh, we can uh, get to the bottom I mean, of everything. He's definitely. He just feels like one of those dudes that would be. Uh, you know, he's he's the guy everybody loves to hate, and you want to have him on your team, type of dude. Uh, which this, the Dodgers haven't had a love to hate kind of dude since, I guess, since Machado. That was a good time. Got him to a World Series at least. Yeah, it didn't some, end well. Sometimes you just need that villain. Sometimes you, you need him. that villain. I think that Correa could honestly probably get the same deal, the same amount of money as Aaron Judge, but like on a 12 year deal, like 12 years, yeah. 360. But yeah, there is something to be said about having those players that just. They, they they strike a nerve in the opponent. And right now, the Dodgers, they really don't have that player on their roster. And yeah, it definitely makes for good TV, makes for good content. But to me, what I'm focused mostly on is how can that player help you win? Carlos Correa is a guy that he checks off a lot of boxes, but at that price, it's a pass for me. It just yeah, is. Yeah, price-wise. All right, let's get into the Swanson stuff. Linked to LA over the weekend. Mark Feinsand, MLB.com, John Heyman. Um, I don't think he's like a fire enthusiast. He really loves arson. Anyways, <laughs> uh, that got that got the juices flowing for some people. The first like semi legitimate Dansby links, and then you go and have Freddie Freeman and Chelsea go out to his wedding this weekend. Definitely got to assume he's putting in some work out there. Um, to <laughs> sell sell Swanson to to the fan base. Make him. Uh, uh, is he going to be a Dodger? 
I still predict that he'll end up signing with either the Cubs, maybe the Cardinals or the Twins. I think the Dodgers could get into the mix, but I think that Swanson's people are going to present an offer from those other teams and it's going to have a number eight on it. And the Dodgers are going to say, we like you at six years, 150, but not eight years and over possibly yeah. 200 million. But as far as selling him to the fan base, what he does provide is above average defense. At this point, you could pretty much say he is an elite defender, but I do caution Dodger fans out there that say he's this elite defender and that he has been his entire career. He went from a solid shortstop to a good shortstop to now he's posting elite numbers but at the same token doesn't have the greatest arm and we saw with Carlos Correa that in 2021 he wins the platinum glove award mm -hmm. and then in 2022 his defense takes a major hit defensive yeah. metrics can be so fickle and volatile they change from year to year but I also say too, Hold on, on, yeah. on Correa real quick Correa is going from Houston which is at the top of the league when it comes to analytics and, and defensive numbers and placement and all that kind of stuff the Dodgers in that same boat Minnesota is Minnesota like you said they are a mid-tier team they're not going to pay for the 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 core of people that would be in the analytics in the R&D in the in the think tank that put this uh, the teams in positions to win you know at elite levels each year. Yeah, and that's a fantastic point. We saw with Xander Bogarts, he took a big leap, and a lot of that had to do with the analytics and how they were yeah. placing him <laughs> on the diamond. So really, in the future, you're going to need a shortstop that has that range. And we know Dansby has that range, but the issue I have with Dansby Swanson is really, this was his first complete season. He's really like a one-year wonder. Look, if you have an artist and he has a one-hit wonder, you don't sign him to a 10-record deal or anything like that. Last yeah. season, he posted a 116 WRC+. Plus plus before his career he has been a below average bat and for his career he's accrued 16.4 f4 across seven seasons 827 games well 40 percent of that f4 took place in 2022 so he's a guy that really is benefiting of having a career year he had an extremely high babbit to start last yeah. season he really got up to a really slow start had a hot summer and then faded down the stretch but if you're looking for the pros of Dansby Swanson is you're getting a shortstop, hopefully around $25 million per season that you can solidify at that position. He is your shortstop heading into this new era with the, the ban on the restricted with the restricted shift. And then also then you open up the position, you open up some more assets to trade for some win. Now talent, what happens mm -hmm. with a Gavin Lux? What happens with a Michael Bush and Jacob Amaya, those kinds of players, because I'm telling you, if you trade for Dansby Swanson, what you're saying is, you're back to being all in for next season. Yeah. You're back to maximizing the championship window <clears throat> with Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman. And I wouldn't be surprised if they make the deal for Dansby Swanson and they sign him up that you see them move a Lux or a Bush to try to get another starting pitcher. Yeah, uh, we were talking about that before. I, I don't think they're going to give up on Lux yet. You still don't feel comfortable with the, the concept of him as the guy at short. Uh, I mean, that goes into, again, uh, them, maybe the team not really uh, setting themselves up for more, to have a little bit more, uh, I don't know, known heading into 23. Like, you'd want to see what Miguel Vargas can do. You'd want to see more of Lux at short. Chances are Lux can be better at short than he is at second. It's his natural position, but you'd still like the idea of a, of a Swanson, definitely of a Correa, of a Willie Adamas, somebody who just takes that pressure off of Lux because not a kid that's always responded well to pressure great you know great year his first really good year in in 2022 but you worry about the sustainability and the repeatability with with somebody like him uh dansby for me uh, i did i did my my uh my four most likely destinations for him i got boston atlanta la i think that's a song and then the giants because they seem to be in the market for somebody giants making a splash and getting Correa sounds terrifying. Um, not as bad as it would have been with, with the Padres, but Atlanta, it's another situation. Atlanta can't lose him. They really just can't. I mean, I, but, I respect how Atlanta is so cold with their free agents. I mean, they, they really just are. cut dudes off, man. They changed their number. They changed the lock on the security code. They're like, hey, man, we're good. But, uh, yeah, I think the, yeah. the Boston's very interesting because I feel like there's a lot of pressure on the Red Sox to make a move after not signing Xander Bogarts. You saw the move they made with Trevor Story last season. You're about but to see torches and pitchforks going after Heim Bloom, man. Heim Bloom is Terrible. public enemy number one yeah. out there in Boston Bastin. for sure. Yeah.
But I mean, yeah, I mean, look, la- he like, the thing about Dansby Swanson too is like he is going to hit for some power and give you. He's one of those guys where you you look at the the at his stats and some of his county numbers and you'll see you know twenty five home runs. You'll see some pretty impressive numbers, but the strikeout rate is very high. And like I said, he does hit the ball hard, but. Yeah, I don't. I'm just not sold on him as a bat. But at the same token, you don't necessarily need every player to hit 30 home runs and be an above average offensive player. But when you saw what the Dodgers lacked last season offensively, especially in the NLDS, he's not going to move the needle. It's not like he has his yeah. reputation like a Carlos Correa who has an 8.49 postseason OPS. He is not that guy. But I will say, if you're Freddie Freeman and you signed with this Dodger team last year and we know that Andrew Friedman, he talked about the vision of this team winning multiple World Series titles. And then in year two, you're throwing Gavin Lux at shortstop and you're going with the youth movement Ooh, and he's call. turning 33 years old. I wouldn't feel great about that if I was Freddie Freeman. But if you do sign his buddy, Dansby Swanson, as you mentioned, they were at his wedding and hopefully they recruited him. And if they're if that's what they're trying to do, yeah. then it kind of makes some sense. But yeah, I do like the I like the little connection that his wife, Molly, Molly Pugh, Molly, something like that. Mallory Pugh, Mallory Pugh. She plays for the Red Stars of Chicago. So she plays for the Red Stars. So there is that connection. He kind of feels like a cub to me. I mean, you see like that hobby bias. Uh, yeah, streams cub to me. Yeah, I can just yeah. see him in those pinstripes, and yeah, at the end the of the show day, show flow going. Got the show flow going, and hey, we saw today the Brewers. They act like they're not open for business. I oh. think they are probably going to listen to trade offers. And I'm telling you, Willie Adamas, thirty-one bombs last season, plays I, top shelf defense. That's my guy. I want to see it short. I have no problem with the Dodgers putting together. Uh, you can't beat this ki- type of prospect package to go and get Adamas, and burns let's do it they have the bodies to make it happen and there's a bunch of dudes let's just let's let's be fair let's be realistic we know michael bush has a lot of of um he has a lot of hype yeah behind him at triple a and all that he's just he's not what the dodgers use what they want what they need on their active roster they need somebody who could defend and do all of the hitting or or at least have the timely hitting just bat it didn't it didn't work it just doesn't work you know you're gonna have another guy where they just straight up waste him and and this you would assume the talent level is much better with somebody like michael bush than the guys i'm going to compare him to but it's going to be the same thing like what happened with Beatty, what happened with edwin rios where they're just kind of there, but you could just you could sense they didn't have faith in them, and they just sort of left them on the roster because they were at times healthy and had a couple spots, and then you know sort of worked out. Yeah, they won a World Series or whatever. But um, I like this one, Clint. No, I think, I think I think it's a great them. point where like you can sell some of these guys on a sell high, and Bush is one of those guys where you don't know how he's going to hit yeah. big league pitching. Do they really have a role for him? I mean, really, I've heard that his best position defensively is actually first base. Last time I checked, there's a guy named Freddie Freeman that you pretty much have to use stadium security to get him not to play first base and rest. But I like this one, Clint. It says, uh, it says from Alexander Z Dodgers nation tells it like it is, tells it, uh, tells you how it really is. That's what we, we try to try to get the truth here. We're not going to give you the Dodgers spin cycle. I saw one earlier that facts. said Clint is my, yeah. If you don't know the facts, then you need to That's shut up. That's what I was going to say. If we brought Correa in, right, if he signed with the Dodgers, dude, me and him could reenact the Ken interview. Oh, that'd, God, be, that'd be dude, I am that'd so be hilarious. So you guys don't know this, but, but Cody does an incredible Carlos Correa impression, particularly from... The Ken Rosenthal interview, re the Cody Bellinger commentary. So if you don't know the facts, Ken, here we go. He's got to shut the. Oh, I thought he doesn't have his finger on the button. Know the, oh yeah. Beep. He's got to shut the f- up. I still had. To, I didn't trust you. You know, this is a this is a family show. Yeah. Fucking shit. And I will say though. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, when it comes to the Corbin <laughs> Burns Adamas, I mean, I've had people ask me, oh, what if he take on Christian Yelich? I did a whole video on the idea of, yeah, Christian Yelich, when you look at the rest of that contract, yes, he is from Thousand Oaks, California, but... 909? Yeah, it's from the... Oh, 90- wait, no, no, no. 
He was not part of that. Anyways. Yeah, I mean, if you look at that deal, there's so many years left on that contract. And really, he's so far from move, removed from being that MVP caliber player that I would not expect the Dodgers to take on a Yelich. A David Price for a couple years for a Mookie Betts, you understand it. But Yelich has, I think, another four years left on mm. that, that massive extension that he signed. So I don't anticipate that at all I mean, if whatsoever. You, if you're not bringing back JT, and we're about to talk about JT right now, speaking of... of uh, Boston not taking care or not Boston Atlanta letting their legends walk and etc. Um, you know David Price did. Some, ah, damn it! I should have just went into what I was going to say because it was something useful. Yell it! You can still find a way. JT's not going to be back. You can find a way to stash him at DH a little bit. Hopefully get more out of that bat. And you know a little bit of left, a little bit of right. I, I would mean, I would absolutely take really? that. Would? <laughs> He's got like six years left on that deal. Is Plus that, that bad? Bet, how bad is the it? vested one? How bad I mean, is it? I'm gonna look at it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's Christian. Christian Yelich, man. Vasquez? It's like yeah. a deal today. Uh, what, what, kind of, what kind of money Yelich. are we looking at here? It's like 180. He's only 31. Why is he another one of those dudes who feels like he's at least 35? He feels like we've seen him forever. Free agent 2029. Oh, my so God. So he's like six years, right? <laughs> Left? I mean, yeah, signed through 28. Six years. That ain't going to happen. Six, oof. Yelly? Yes, no. it's pretty up there. Only, only. That's got to uh, be one of the worst it was, contracts. It was only a $215 million deal. But, yeah, this is a guy who almost went back-to-back on MVPs. It's not, then if he, he get injured, he <laughs> would have. Yeah, then he broke his damn knee, uh, kneecap or whatever the hell it was. Hey, he gets on base, you know. Yeah, six years uh, ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's not going to be that, that 30, 40 homer guy anymore, but... <sighs> Shit, I'd take Christian Yelich over Trace Thompson. Let's be real. Oh, well, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I... Th- that's a lot of years to commit. I mean, the Dodgers, they pride themselves on financial flexibility. And don't get me wrong. I love me some Willie Adams and Corbin Burns, but I don't love him enough to take on what could go down as one of the worst arbit- um, albatross contracts in the league, especially in the later years. So, yeah, I mean, at that price, you need an all-star caliber player. <laughs> and, yeah, I think Yelich, yeah, I'm just – we talk about his swing and <clears throat> where he's been at his career. He's not terrible. He's not awful, but – if yeah. he would not have gotten that deal if he was putting up the numbers that he is in the last few seasons. So that's kind of a no from me. He does look like my cousin, which is interesting. My cousin, uh, I forgot his name, but um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, that's anyways. what's in. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's that's going to be a no for me. I'd rather include some some more prospects. But yeah, David, uh, David underscore Burra says Rendon and Yelich battling it out for the worst contract in MLB. I mean, at least at least Yelich plays. Right. I Steven mean, Steven Strasburg, stand up, because yeah. that is a god awful contract. That's the worst. He's contract. He's done like what fifty innings total at 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 most since signing that massive deal. Two forty five. Yeah. Ooh, rough. And um, that's a guy Dodger fans are. Oh, we missed out on Strasburg. We missed out on Rendon. Every, so yeah. it's everybody great to bring we up those lessons. On, yeah. On, in twenty nineteen, that that definitely kind of worked out. Um. One per no, we didn't sign him. Then it was after twenty. Anyways, we we didn't talk too much about Justin Turner last week. We got to talk a bit about Red Turn Two uh, today. The latest on JT is that the Marlins apparently have an offer on the table to the veteran redhead via the Miami Herald. No idea what the numbers are, but reportedly, <clears throat> quote competitive. D backs have uh, been linked to Justin Turner. He had the photo over the weekend with Magic Johnson and Corey Seager, but Magic, who called him Dodgers captain, Justin Turner. I know you asked the question on Twitter. What did you read into Magic's uh, commentary about the captain, Justin Turner? I think there's a pretty decent chance that that Magic probably thinks he's still under contract (laughs) for another, like, six seasons. I mean... For all we know, I mean, this is Magic Johnson on Twitter. I mean, he probably right here. probably thinks that. So, yeah, I don't think I don't make anything of that at all. I mean, I think I do think yeah, the that, Dodgers. I mean, that one shot of him. <laughs> there's Magic, the Magic there you go. Man. There you go. Right there, I, so. I mean, look, the reality is right. Andrew Friedman. He said that when they start spring training in Glendale, Arizona, that they hope that he's going to be in Dodger Blue. The issue I have though is, yeah, if you can bring him back on a one-year, ten million dollar deal, when you consider the buyout, it'd be like with a 
$2 million buyout. That's like a $12 million contract on a one-year deal, maybe a Chase Utley type deal where he takes a bench role. I understand it. I still think he can be an above average bat in the regular season. Look, he had a 123 WRC plus last year. I mean, yeah. in the second half of the season, post all-star break, he had 307. That was the seventh highest in the league. But the only issue is defensively at one point, he was a plus defender. He's now a negative defender. He can't be your everyday option at third base. But for a team like the Marlins or the Diamondbacks, teams that need help against left-handed pitching, they need help changing their clubhouse culture, he makes a lot of sense. And if I'm the, one of those teams, I might offer him a two-year deal where you take him into his age 40 season. Whereas if yeah. I'm the Dodgers, if I really want to bring back a guy that's only used for me, the only thing he can contribute is that he's a designated hitter because yeah. my designated hitter next season is Shohei Otani. <laughs> okay, so... I just don't, I mean, I think on a one-year deal, I'm okay with it, but I don't like the idea of possibly signing him on a multi-year deal. Yeah. I know there's talk out there that, oh, he's going to be the manager of the Dodgers one day. You can't think like that. I think it's business this season, and I wouldn't be upset if they, look, I mean, we had Ron Say in here, sitting right where you were. Best he got friend. Best friend Ron Say yeah. gets traded to the Chicago Cubs. Steve Garvey signed a five-year deal with the Padres. Duke Snyder, he ended his career on the Giants, and before that, he made an all-star team with the New York Mets. I mean, we have example after example of iconic Dodgers who ended their careers with other teams. And look, let's not forget Justin Turner. It's not like he started with the Dodgers. He was no. with the Orioles and the Mets. But what say you on JT? Uh, for me, I mean, what he adds to the team, it's all good. Uh, like, like in terms of actual production, uh, if he can do what he did last year, even with the slow start and all that, I'm fine with the production. I'm fine with all that. You worry about his inability to hit in the pl uh, the playoffs anymore because he has not hit in the playoffs since like 2018 or something like yeah. that. That is a bit of a red flag. But for for me, you mentioned like the Marlins and the need for for some clubhouse and some chemistry and and veteran there. I just am fully. It, it's tough because it's like almost like a breakup. You've been with somebody for a while, and it's like you know it's time to move on. But you know. You guys are leasing a car together, and uh, I don't know. You you just put a down payment on a dog. I don't know what people oh, do dude. these days, but me and my girls stayed together for like so many years because of the rent in LA. You have no idea. We just so so along that point, but I think it's time for a new voice in the in the locker room, and it it's not necessarily it's gonna be it's gonna be a brand new voice. It's probably gonna be Freddie. It's gonna be somebody along those lines, but it's kind of a changing of the guard time. If you're going all in on this on this kitty movement. And and you want to uh, you know, the plan is to change that much, make it radical, just go all in because yeah, what what JT has meant to the organization, it, it really is astonishing what they what they're able to do with this Ned Coletti scrap heap kind of signing. Um, but let let's let's if you love something, let it go type of thing. Mm -hmm let it go out on top like he's in a good spot it sucks he's always going to have that 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 shitty sour taste in his mouth of the early playoff exit and nothing working out right thank you right on time he's uh cody's actually in uh australia and there's a time difference <laughs> My. Shout, shout out shout out for those who yeah. know um but yeah I, that's where i'm at like i love jt be happy to have you back uh, after your career but it's it's just time to move on and both sides do something different. It's going to be worse for JT than it is for the Dodgers. I think the Dodgers can move on and and just get something different. You're still going to have, you know, Clayton Kershaw. He's pretty he's pretty important. He's still going to be there. You're still going to see what what Freddie's full involvement in the team. Maybe that sparks uh, Mookie to step up and really need to be the guy because he is the guy. But everybody knows that's Justin Turner's clubhouse. Hundred percent, yeah, and that's let it, let it be Austin Barnes Clubhouse now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, I think I think when it comes to Justin Turner, another thing too, you mentioned Clayton Kershaw. That's where where I draw the line when it comes to these feel good work pass due signings. Is are you a Hall of Famer? Are you a first ballot Hall of Famer? Clayton yeah. Kershaw. I don't care if he had an ERA. 20 plus bring if he's willing to put on a dodge uniform again 
give him his 20 million. That's mm-hmm. how much Clayton Kershaw has meant to this <laughs> franchise because he is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Justin Turner, a multi-time All-Star, an iconic Dodger, but I don't think he carries the same weight as a Clayton Kershaw. And I think bottom line, too, is he has to do what's right for him. He's a guy that's already expressed that he wants to play into his 40s, and he can do that with other teams out there. There are going to be opportunities. Look, he had a 2.4 F war last season. I yeah. mean, he's a guy that one of my theories, too, with Justin Turner, I remember talking to him uh, during spring training last year. He didn't like the whole lockout thing and how these players – didn't have enough time the shorter spring training. Mm-hmm. And we've seen that he's a guy that he heats up as the summer months come along. And that's when yeah. he starts to heat up. Well, he got to a very slow start in 2022, whereas in 2021, it was the power surge early on. Remember, we had the nacho bomb. He hit 27 dingers. So I still think <laughs> that he can produce and give teams what they want as far as a regular season hitter. But the reason why I don't want to see him back on the Dodgers on a multi-year deal is because he's really struggled mightily in the postseason. Yeah. He's six for his last 47 over the last two post seasons. Mm. He was injured in 2021, but we know that Dave Roberts is loyal to a fault. And if he's in a Dodger uniform, he's going to give him those opportunities. Our, our friend Tim Rogers says that uh, basically echoing exactly what you said, can have JT on the team because Doc won't resist playing him. There you go. I mean, that's the truth. Dave loves JT. Yeah. JT loves no. Dave. And that that will be his guy. He will be in there batting fifth every game, even when he's batting 163. <laughs> yeah, he will be there. He will be batting fifth in game two of the postseason. <laughs> that's just what's going to happen. <laughs> And that's how Dave is. He probably thinks he's still peak Justin Turner. He's probably like, hey, JT, you hit that home run yesterday off Lackey, right? In the NLCS, you know, he probably thinks that he's still that version of Justin Turner. But this is not a slight on JT. I just definitely think that from the organization standpoint, from where this team is headed when it comes to a youth movement, yes, he does have the ability to to mentor young guys and he yeah. definitely has that that club in his bag but i also think to me if i'm looking at this as a business and wanting to win a world series and put together the best 26 man roster if you consider the kind of money that he can get versus the deal that the dodgers would get give him i think it's definitely something that i would consider because you want to use that dh position to be flexible and move guys yeah. around and yeah. really he has no spot on the field maybe as a part-time in a pinch at their base. But, I mean, you even saw last year where Max Muncy, he actually graded as a as a plus defender. I mean, I mean, he's not great, but he still is not where Justin Turner yeah. is at this stage. And, yeah, I think that it just feels like if we're going with this youth movement and you bring back JT, it almost feels like the college guy that goes to high school parties, that kind of vibe, you know, that kind of thing. So... I'm okay that's with that. Uh, actually, Doug. Yeah. That's me going to uh, your your. Hey, he's your he's your boy. He's a a Cal State Fullerton guy. JT. You wanna, yeah. yeah, it's. You guys best friends? Well, you know, been done to. Yeah. You and JT boys. Me, Correa, and and JT are all about to hang out. It's all party. Let's do it. Let's yeah. go. Have some have some yoo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> that's what the kids that's what the kids drink. Will Will brings up a, another good point about JT and the, the the toughness for him of walking away from this. It's not just 2022. It's, you know, talking about the sour taste. He couldn't even celebrate uh, you know, with the team on the field when they got the ring in 20. And he know, still did. Doug's favorite ring. Yeah, he, did, he did eventually show up and show out. <laughs> Much to the chagrin of all. Yeah, no, that's a definitely something. And yeah. yeah, he's also just so entrenched in this L.A. community with his foundation. He's such a beloved Dodger. And a lot Sign of in Anaheim. Yeah, I mean, that's there are options out there, but I don't know. This Dodger team, I mean, they declined his option. You non-tendered Cody Bellinger. They have shown a little coldness this offseason to some of these beloved Dodgers, so I wouldn't be totally shocked, and I just think he's going to get a pretty nice deal. I think we're going to see JT sign probably a two-year $24 million deal with the Diamondbacks or Marlins or something along those lines where you're going to say, hey, at that price, he's a guy that just, he's described himself as you know a baseball junkie a baseball yeah. rat and he wants to continue his career I, I mean i hope for his sake he goes somewhere where there's they're actually playing for something not just to keep True. playing but um just ideally not not in la good comment here from our friend nando 390 when dave roberts gets fired can we still say fire roberts <laughs> Now you're going to say fire Justin Turner because he's going to be the new manager. Fire Justin Turner. All right, quickly moving on a little bit. Uh, Carlos Rodon uh, rumors not going to come to the Dodgers. Yankees, apparently from one guy who has like five followers on Twitter, says a deal is in the works. 
my pick. Brian Reynolds wants to be hey, traded. Heyman did report that the, the Yankees are going to make a formal offer to Rodon. Oh. Yeah. Heyman we could always... are actually morose here. Morosi reported it, and I think Heyman retweeted it. Okay, power left at Yankee Stadium makes all the sense. So, so Morosi stopped talking about soccer for a little bit or <laughs> hockey. <laughs> about divi- God, Division 15 college he's hockey. He's such an annoying person. Rhode Island East State. Your notifications on for. Um, but if you'd like to join the show, Morosi, please. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please drop, <laughs> drop into them comments. Drop an F in the chat for John Morosi being on here. Did we actually try to get him? He was, he was uh, talking he, to he uh, was Team around. Japan. Oh, that's right. In oh, Japanese, that's right. by the you way. Were, Very you, impressive. You really wanted Morosi. I wanted Morosi. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Brian Reynolds rumors. Uh, Brian Reynolds wants out of Pittsburgh. Cannot blame him. Beautiful park. Terrible team. You, this guy here, has a video coming out tomorrow, Tuesday, on our Dodgers Nation YouTube channel all about Brian Reynolds. So, guys, make sure you subscribe and give him, give him a little taste, though. What, what's, uh, what should people know about the, the Reynolds rumors, if any? So, I definitely think that... <laughs> That in Pittsburgh, they have to consider listening to offers for Reynolds. I mean, he signed that two year, $13.5 million deal that bought him out of those arbitration years. He was a, a super two. Deal. It was a weird deal, too, because you look at usually the, the money goes up, right? Like yeah. we saw Walker Beeler, it's, it's right at 6.75. So, yeah, I mean, he's a guy that after that deal is up, he's still under team control for another couple of seasons. He'll be in the final two years of his arbitration years. And at that point, you're paying him around $14 million per season. But if the Dodgers could make a trade for Brian Reynolds. They'd be getting a guy that brings you some lumber for the outfield. And the Dodgers definitely need some more production, especially when you look in the power department. He's a guy that's going to hit between 20 and 30 home runs. He is an above average bat. Defensively, when you kind of dive into his numbers, I mean, he did a great job just patrolling that cavernous outfield at PNC Park. He's got an above average arm, but I do think eventually he will be a corner outfielder. But the thing issue I have is that Ken Rosenthal, he reported yesterday that the Pirates are looking for a Juan Soto type package and if you talk about a Juan Soto type package that isn't happening because yeah. Brian Reynolds isn't Juan Soto who is under team control for basically two and a half seasons and that would be like the Dodgers giving up Diego Cartaya uh, Diego Cartaya Bobby Miller and Michael Bush I just don't see that happening if I'm this Pirates team they're pretty much two years away from even getting close to entertaining yeah. the idea of contention but I like the idea of how about this you do a super deal and you get Bednar and Brian Reynolds if you really want to go crazy. And yeah, I just kind of like the fact that if you would get Brian Reynolds, you'd be getting him during his prime in his peak years. And it really just depends on how win now this current Dodgers team is. Yeah, uh, if you're trading um, trading in those type of names, they better be getting Willie Adamas and you know potentially a part of Corbin Burns. I'm just saying. Yeah. Nah, I'm okay on the Brian Reynolds stuff, but subscribe, find it on, on the YouTube uh, on Tuesday and watch it over and over and tell your grandmother to watch. All right. I wanted to talk because uh, apparently we did that thing where we talked like for an hour just about free agents and stuff. So uh, thanks for hanging out with us as usual, guys. But the Dodgers, I want to know, are they getting outclassed in the National League right now? Because Steve Cohen spending all of the world's money. Money literally means nothing to him. The Padres, we know, is all uh, are all in. Uh, there, there have been rumors of owner Peter Seidler's health potentially being in question. You heard nothing from us here. Uh, <laughs> the Braves have like 15 catchers now after trading for the top available catching prospect or not ca- top available catcher on the trade market today. And, and Sean Murphy and the Dodgers are going with the kitty kids. Um, are, is Dodgers ownership no longer the class of baseball? I wouldn't say that. I would say that the Dodgers ownership is learning that if you want to have sustained success, that sometimes you have to be a little patient. You can't just go out there and make it rain, like my man says right here in, in, in the club every single night. At some point, you have to you have to look a few years ahead, a few moves ahead. And right now, Stephen Cohen, he's spending money like he just won the lottery. And he's spending money like a new money type of billionaire. What does a new yeah. money guy do? He goes out there, buys a Lamborghini and the Bugatti. He gets the Versace 
Versace and all the flashy stuff. A billionaire who's like a generational billionaire, he's wearing just like a navy blazer and a white shirt and like he's driving around in a, a in the Q-Zip. He's driving yeah, around yeah. and, you know, like a, a Mercedes, a nice car, but nothing crazy flashy. I think the Dodgers, they realize that, hey, let all these guys spend all that crazy money because these are big signings, but Otani is the signing in Major League Baseball. They will make history if they sign Otani next season, and I don't think the Dodgers are being outclassed. I think that they don't love any of these guys. I think that they got themselves into a precarious situation with Trevor Bauer, and they're still dealing with that but if you look at their money i mean they're still top seven in payroll they've spent close to two billion dollars in payroll since 2016 so they're still big spenders and let's not forget i mean anytime you have a guy under contract for 365 million dollars in mookie bets and a Freddie Freeman, who they signed to a $162 million deal. They're still spending, but it's just a little different this year because they understand that, look, I mean, when Corey Seager was the all-world going into God mode, having his Corey book postseason, what, how much money was he making, right? It's yeah, not like he was yeah. this big-name player. Cody Bellinger in his MVP season was this big-name player. Jeremy Pena next season. They understand how baseball works, and they realize that, yeah, sometimes it's not about signing these big-name free agents. That's not the key, the only way to win a World Series. I think they're thinking long-term. I mean, we know uh, Andrew Friedman has said as much time and time again that they look at payroll, they look at all this stuff in a, a multi-year uh, kind of picture multi-year view this is a year where you know it's it's pretty apparent that they are looking past 2023 there's there's something hugely important to like note or consider too in 2023 you don't need to go out and win 111 games or more than that it clearly doesn't matter how many games you win you just got to get into the tournament so you find your way to sneak in with a pathetic 93 win season and you save money and find a way to go get Otani next year. It is what it is, but all good points from this man. And I'm going to put you on the spot again, though. See if you can be the, the, uh, the ever positive DMAC that everybody loves and subscribes to on Twitter and Instagram. Are we fooling ourselves thinking that LA, thinking that these Dodgers with the plan like as is this team that they currently have on the 40 man roster uh plus Jason Hayward are we fooling ourselves thinking they're going to be you know good next season I think there's still a lot of talent on this team and a lot of players that have a lot of upside. So I still feel good about this team making a run at this division. Let's not forget that they had a guy last year that almost won the Cy Young in Julio Urias. You do have Clay and Kershaw back and you still have when Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman are still in their primes and they're your best players, you still have a good shot. And I think that this team, maybe they might take a step back in the regular season. I don't anticipate they're going to win 111 games, but in some of those losses next season, those losses next season could turn into wins down the line by using that to develop young talent. So I think this is going to be an exciting, interesting year. I definitely think that you're going to really usher in this new era and this team is going to be competitive. And I also think too, maintaining that flexibility and not taking on so much salary in the off season. Well, if they see the potential in this team, once the market starts opening up during the season, I could see them adding pieces. Look what we saw in 2018, trading for a Manny Machado and bringing in a guy like that. Yes. A lot of had to do with the fact that Corey Seager went down with an injury, but Mm -hmm. I still think this team top to bottom talent wise, they're still one of the best teams. I mean, how many big signings did the Padres make last season, right? I mean, they last year, the Dodgers signed Freddie Freeman. You can't make a big name marquee signing every single year. You just can't. It's unrealistic and it's not sustainable. And like I said, the big thing for next year is that young guys step up and we're going to see you play them or you trade them. You have to see what you have. And I do like the town on this team and I wouldn't rule out the possibility of signing a Dansby Swanson or them consistently considering to make a trade that really helps bolster their lineup. And also, look, Will Smith, too. I mean, a lot of talent on this team still. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of talent. There's 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 the chance that these guys, uh, a bunch of these dudes, step up. Um, Will Smith, you know, it really coming into his own, finally putting together that all-star uh, caliber season. I also look at the names on this roster, and, like, you've seen, you've seen the the – you know, potential projected opening day lineup or whatever. And I just start thinking like, my God, I remember, 
I remember in like 2005 when they felt really good about that shitty roster and 07 when they felt really good about that shitty roster, you know? Yeah, that's true. Like you're seeing, <laughs> thank you. You're seeing Trace Thompson in the center and like Miguel Vargas and left and, you know, Chris Taylor at, at second. I'm like, this is, this is potential to be like for, for Dodger fans of recent vintage catastrophically bad. Now that's me being the complete opposite end of the spectrum of positive Doug. That's me being uh, what's a good name? You're good. At, you're terrible at names, right? By being uh, negative. Uh, well, there's positive Doug. Hey, I'm either Dougie Downer or <laughs> looking at the Michelada half full. And also, we haven't talked about the bullpen. They discovered Evan Phillips last season. There's a lot of guys. It's a lot of talent on this team. I mean, how about Max Muncy? Max Muncy is a guy that you hope has a nice bounce back season. Yeah, I, I think he can. He had a nice NLDS. He had a nice finish to the season. So there's not any Chris Taylor. He had the offseason surgery that really hampered his year. He was banged up. So I think the Dodgers aren't rebuilding. They're retooling. Cooling. And let's not forget too. I mean, this is this is a, this is a team that they won 111 games last year, and I think too they have the fire of thinking the Padres are going to be this all-world team. Look, the Padres yeah. are heading into this season almost like the Dodgers headed into last season, where they're yeah. saying this is going to be the greatest team of all time. Watch out, 1998 New York Yankees. And then how did the Dodgers deal with those with that pressure late in the year? So yeah, you do lose Trey Turner. There's a big hole at shortstop. I like. Like I said, hey, what do we? What did the guy tell me uh, during uh, the winter meetings that they don't feel that they wouldn't bet on Gavin Lux being the opening day shortstop? I still feel like, look, this is Andrew Freeman. He is cooking up something. The team you see right now, the roster you see right now, will not be the roster on opening day. There will be some tweaks. I would not rule out some moves. I mean, this is Andrew freaking Friedman we're talking about. He's considered to be one of the best in the business for a reason. Yeah, this is definitely, I, I think I said it last week, this is the test of in Friedman we trust. This is going to be that test of, of an offseason and, and of a season. And, and, you know, even with my, my uh, my somebody said negative Nancy, but you know, I was trying to find something that was more related to my name, so I guess I'm going to change my name to Nancy. Um, I'm just trying to be, the you know play the devil's advocate with, uh, with this because I know you're gonna you're gonna see the positive on it. That's what you do, and yeah, there's a lot of potential with this team because you still do have, you know, Mookie Betts. He's pretty damn good at baseball. You still have Freddie Freeman. You still have Will Smith. You still have, you know, Gavin Lux, who just a couple years ago was a a you know blue chip can't miss type prospect. And guess what? They're still Clayton Kershaw. They're still Julio. They're still um, you know Tony Gonson was an all star. There, there's still a lot of of potential there. But there was just a lot of potential for some of those teams in, in the past that I rattled off, uh, and then it did not work out well. So uh, that's where I worry about, uh, oh, crap. Hey, we're, we're, we're going, going through this again? We're taking for Victor Wimbanyama. I mean, we know that at this point. No, that's what we were talking with Noah about. But, uh, yeah, I mean, at the bottom line, though, is – what if Dustin May looks like the Dustin May that we saw before he went down with the injury in 2021? Yeah. I mean, yeah, there are a lot also of talking about like five good games before he that's blew true, out but his I mean, elbow. The strikeout rate. I mean, there are horses on this team. I don't think as constructed with so many unproven young players, you could let's see with a straight face. Oh, the Dodgers should be the World Series favorites, or the Dodgers yeah. should be the favorites to win the NL West because they're not proven commodities at this point. Do yeah. I think they could show some flashes? I do, but I also I just don't buy the fact that Andrew Friedman doesn't have something up his sleeves. I just find that hard to believe, whether it be a trade to bolster mm. the rotation or adding a shortstop, yeah. another outfielder. Gonna say, He's going to make some moves. Even with my my playing the devil's advocate, negative devil's advocate here, I still do feel there's a trade. There will be a trade. There's always some sort of trade that Andy has going because that's just what he loves doing. He gets off on that ish. Yeah. And he loves himself a February signing. He loves himself, people showing up during spring training, shaking things up. Things are going to happen. It's just like right now, you know, trying to speak for the fans that, that are definitely um, pissed and frustrated and, and, and more importantly, very concerned about this roster. Um, you know, hey, I guess we can have fun, uh, you know, being number six on the MLB power rankings with, from Ben Verlander next year. <laughs> I'm assuming the Mets are number one because that's where Justin is. That's probably what it is. Absolutely. It's going to be tough to, to knock them off that mantle. That yeah. But look, I mean, I don't want to peak in July. I don't want to peak in August. Yes. I want to see a gritty team, a team that is... <laughs> do the gritty. Do the gritty. 
do my grid again. I want to see a team that goes out there with a lot of fight and a lot of passion, has to earn and not coast during the summer. I mean, like I yeah. said last year, give me the 86 win World Series winning Dodgers. And we're going to kind of laugh that they flipped the script and they realize that you can't do it the, the way they did it last season. It's about have your team just peak at the right time. And I also think, too, is if you are going to sign a Shohei Otani next season, for that to work out, for you to win with a Shohei Otani, you're going to need some of these young talent to emerge and guys that you can trust. Because if Bobby Miller and all these guys are bust and they don't work out and you sign Shohei Otani, well, you're going to fill out the rotation with a lot of bunch of mid-pitchers like the Angels did, and it's not going to work yeah. out. So this is the year. It's almost like that gap year. I mean, you graduate high school and you're like, I'm going to take a gap year, go to Europe or something. Not that I did wow. that or any, not, not that I did that. Wow, but, rich kid. Yeah. Graduate high school. Gra <laughs> graduate middle school, you know, the year between the, yeah, but like, it's almost like, look, they're, they're not taking a year off. It's not like they're punting on this season, but of all these teams that the yeah. Phillies, the Padres, the Mets, all these teams that are spending money. How were their last six years? Their last seven years? I mean, Phillies, Padres, last year they met in the NLCS, but it's a very different thing to just make it to the World Series and actually win the whole damn thing. And the Dodgers know how razor thin that margin is, and they realize the value of developing prospects. So I'm not really overly concerned. If Shohei Otani was a free agent this offseason, it wouldn't be about resetting the CBT and developing young talent. They would say, oh, Dodgers reportedly offer Shohei Otani 600 kajillion billion dollars. Yeah, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't hear a damn thing. You would just thank you. You would just get the notification. The Dodgers have a press conference tomorrow at 11 a.m. Exactly. That's Those interested in attending, please RSVP to this email. And like I always say, when it comes to uh, Andrew Friedman, he only speaks when it's time to yell checkmate. So I as, think. as they say in the biz, good stuff, guys. Look forward to that 86 win season. Let's go. D Mac over here just guaranteed That's it. That's what's <laughs> in. Thanks for hanging out with us as always. Appreciate the uh, the comments, the questions, all that kind of good stuff. We didn't get into all the things we wanted to talk about, so we'll have to have the Outlook series start sometime later, maybe a roundtable this week, because why not? So until then, find us on the internet, DodgersNation.com. There's a whole bunch of stuff there that we always write about because it's about the Dodgers, and that's what we do, and this is our livelihood. Subscribe to Blue Heaven on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, everywhere your podcasts are available for free. We live there. Subscribe to us on YouTube, YouTube.com slash DodgersNationTV. If you're not subscribed, what's wrong with you? Do it now because we're really close to 60K. We're doing it all organically because we're cool like that or something. I am real FRG. You can find me at that on the Twitter and the Instagram. That guy is D Mac underscore LA on Twitter and Instagram. Follow Cody home. He did a good job on the buttons. There's the boy. Oh, it's not Kevin pillar, bro. So Tony, did you pay two bucks for that? Oh, edit? You know what Anthony Keen said <laughs> earlier, Anthony Keen said, we need to start every show with an, uh, Oh, tying to the Dodgers prayer circle. So uh, we, we can do that. I get some, uh, I get some candles or something like that in the middle. Thank you again for your comments. Thank you for your questions. Follow us. We are Dodgers nation on Twitter and Instagram. We will see you next Monday. Bye.